I'll just have the work with Ben, sir. All well, William. It's no problem, sir. Foreign Secretary and Secretary of State will be dining in the Hilton tonight, but Sir Geoffrey has expressed a desire to venture further afield. Right, I'll send Wallace with him, sir. Right. What did Pill want? Wellingham wants to dine out tonight, so you'll have to cover him. Terrific. Hello, Len. Good morning, Mike. Willie. Everything all right inside? The Russians and the Americans have arrived. Here come the French. All right, Fichon Le Con. Let's get out of the way. You two don't look very happy this morning. No, we're not. If I'd wanted to be a policeman, I'd have joined the boys in blue. If I wanted to be a wet nurse, I would have done a course in potty training. Well, a lot of people would like to see this conference disrupted. Best way to do it would be to knock over one of the delegates. Yeah, maybe. But it's not our job to play escort to that lot, though. Take it as a compliment. Foreign Secretary asked for the sandbaggers. Wellingham asked for us, I'll bet. Just to keep it in the family. Oh, yes, he can bully us. The law would tell him to go and jump in Grand Harbour. Yes. The KGB, the CIA and the Stack are all here, too. It's no bad thing that SIS is duly represented. It's become a lot more pompous since he became head of station, hasn't he? <laughs> Come on, I'll get you some coffee. Sit down. Take your jackets off. Relax. That will cause a stir with the locals. Sorry? We're carrying armory under these jackets. Oh, yes. Well, sit down anyway and enjoy the view. See what I mean? That's not a sight you'll see in Westminster on a Tuesday morning. Mm, not unless things have changed for the better. Are you breeding those things? No, but with the sandbaggers away, we've lost our filtering process. We've been here long enough to be a filter yourself. Just keep the rubbish away from me, will you? And if I make a mistake? I'll fire you. I see. It's one of our Burnside for dictator days, is it? If I was, the sandbaggers wouldn't be in Malta. I'd have cancelled the conference. Don't you agree with Salt? I don't trust the Russians. Half detente must be better than none. It isn't. While they sit in Malta whining and dining each other, their little men in places like Omsk and Novosibirsk creating weapons of mass destruction. Weapons the SALT conference completely ignores. Surely the Americans know that. Well, they have the information, yes, but they choose to ignore it too. We'll all sign the agreements out there, the Western world will heave a sigh of relief, start building motorways, and the Soviets will laugh all the way back to Moscow. If you feel that strongly about it, why don't you write a paper? I did, last year, had it rammed down my throat. Not much else you can do. Got some coffee? We're talking about Soviet expansion. All you can think about is coffee. Not all I can think about. I'm also wondering when my new filing cabinet will arrive. I'm planning to paint my nails. You see, if I get a lunch hour for a change, I might go out and buy a new blouse. Will I come and see him, please? Thank you. I shall be with C. Don't you want your coffee first? Can I get back? Do you ask Jeff Ross to meet me for lunch? Right. Morning, sir. Morning, Mozart. Just a quick word. Coffee? Thank you. I put a letter up to your predecessor about seven months ago on Soviet expansion. Yeah. He refused to forward it at the time. I wonder if I update it, resubmit it. What are its conclusions? Well, in essence, the detente is a dangerous excuse for making cuts in the defence budget. That we should be strengthening NATO instead of supping with the Soviets. What you're saying is that you don't agree with the Malta Conference. Oh, all I'm saying is we shouldn't pin any hopes on it, and certainly we shouldn't be making defence cuts on the strength of it. The whole point of SALT is that it enables all nuclear countries to limit defence expenditure. Yes, but what it does do is to allow Russia to con the rest of us into making limitations while she forges ahead. The Americans have excellent satellite coverage now. The Soviet Union is an area of eight and a half million square miles. It's impossible to monitor an area of that size effectively, even with satellite coverage. Government policy is that the UK should attend on and attempt to implement SALT agreements. And I can't see that SIS has any right to try to reverse that policy. Well, not to reverse it, no, but to warn against possible consequences. You've spoken to the intelligence director about this? Yes. And he agrees in principle. Then why isn't he leading on it? It's his business. Well, I'll tell you what I think. Countries without weapons don't make wars. And if these SALT meetings are the beginning of the end of nuclear armories, 
then they help to ensure a future for mankind. You can't possibly believe that. The Russians will never give up their armed forces. No, I don't think they will. But I think that limitations are a step in the right direction. Only if those limitations are balanced, and the Russians want to achieve an imbalance in their favour. Then what would you do? As the UK government? Yes. Well, I'd build a fifth Polaris, a Poseidon submarine. I'd increase the hunter killer submarine force. I'd build a tactical... And where would you get the, the money to pay for all that? Exactly. Where's the money coming from? That's why salt is so attractive to our politicians. It saves money. It might be ahead in the SAM policy, but in the short term, it balances the books and keeps them in office. Yeah, and they are our masters. Then we have a duty to fight them, sir. The invisible government, you mean? Intelligence services working against the elected administration? We can do it by democratic means. If we shout long enough and loud enough, someone will have to listen. When there's a song on the radio one doesn't want to hear, one switches off the radio. We are the radio. They can switch us off any time they like. It will be worth our jobs to get a hearing, to force them to listen. I hope that isn't a proposal to interfere in the Malta Conference. Because if it is, you can clear your desk and be out of here by lunchtime. Write your paper. I'll consider it. In due course. And when we know the results of Malta. Yes, sir. Thank you. Can we take a little walk? Just had a note shoved into my hot sticky. Ever heard of a Yuri Falatov? Yes. He's one of the KGB contingent here. He's quite high ranking. A colonel or something. Oh, well, he wrote the note. He wants to meet with Burnside, Bastion Square, Mdina, 11 tomorrow morning. Why Burnside? Who knows? You'd better get back to station then. To London by immediate signal, exclusive for C and D ops. OK. You'll uh, handle things here. What's there to handle? OK, OK, I agree with you. But what do, what do you want to do? Huh? You want to blow up the conference room? No. All right. There's nothing you can do about Morgan, so just forget it. There's nothing I can do about anything. That's the problem. Huh? Everything I've ever valued, everything I've ever worked for, I have no place anymore. I've become an embarrassment to everyone, to the service, even to myself. Oh, come on. What are you talking about? Oh, not because I believe in things like duty and patriotism. I stand up when they play their national anthem. <laughs> I like girls, have long hair and wear dresses. Well, there's only a couple of things wrong with you, Neil. You're too lonely and you're too tired. And ineffective. <laughs> That's not what your reputation says. The way I feel now, that doesn't count for much. Well, that sacrificed any reputation I may have to make a stand against Salt Three. Hey, Neil, listen. It's not your job to worry about Salt Three. Oh, isn't it? No, it isn't. When we get on the bandwagon too, is that? Oh, come on, man. Which it is my job, Jeff. It's my job to put the security of the West before any reputation I may have, or career, for that matter. I mean, what are we trying to do? Establish an economically sound Europe so the Soviets can just walk in, take it out of our hands? Neil, what are you planning? I'm planning anything. Oh, yeah, sure. But uh, if a chance just happened to come up to hit one of the Russian delegations, huh? Oh, God. Look, don't do it, Neil. Nobody's going to thank you for it. Besides, you know the score better than anybody. Intelligence services under the strict control of the government, right? Just... Jeff. Huh? If, if anything did happen in Malta, you'd keep your mouth shut, wouldn't you? I'm not going to say anything. But, Neil, for your own good, don't do it. Whatever it is. I hear you. Immediate signal, exclusive secret from Malta. We heard from C? 
Yes, he's distanced it to the intelligence director and wants to see it together as soon as possible. Fix it. Right. Hey, Sandy, the ops is here. Fine, thank you. You can go up now. OK. No further disc from me, but check Malta flights for this evening, will you? Right. So what do we have on all this? Yuri Filatov is a double agent, sir. He's been working to us for almost 11 years. Feeding to whom? Currently to Moscow Station. But he's moved around the world quite a bit. We recruited him in Paris. How? Oh. Honey trap. Quite a nice one. He was married to his boss's daughter. I see. Oh. Have you ever met him? Not to my knowledge, no, sir. But he probably knows your name. He was mission planner for their executive action squad at one time. Hmm. Well, it doesn't explain why he wants a meet. Is there any one way to find out, sir? Yes. All right. Get out there, but be careful. Be sure you're covered by a sandbag. Yes, sir. If by any chance he wants to be lifted, uh, you should try to dissuade him. Of course. Attack. It's not our job. It's extremely boring. So, what are you doing? Well, we escort them from the Hilton to the Vodala every morning. They have a conference lunch, so we hang around all day. And then we escort them back to the Hilton in the evening. If one of them's going out for dinner, we just tag along discreetly. And how's Peel justifying his existence? Uh, sucking up to anyone with an earshot, pretending he's in charge. Trying to arrange a visit to some prehistoric temples on the day off. Well, there's not much I can do about it. Wellingham made a bid for both of you, and C agreed. Uh, maybe we'll get an operation somewhere else in the world. Or maybe a Falata will give you something to do here. OK, keep me in sight once I'm in Bastion Square. Roger. Neil Burnside? Yes. I am Yuri Filatov. Yes, I've seen pictures of you. You are still operations director? Yes. I want to come in. When? Now. Today. I am ready to go. Why? I have had long enough. I am divorced now, and my wife has taken the children away. There is nothing to keep me in Moscow. Is your nerve going? No. But... I have been a loyal servant to SIS for many years. I have taken many risks. Had many, many narrow escapes. My service is very keen that you should stay. But if you say that you're cracking, that you're under suspicion, that you cannot work for us any longer... Yes, I can say that, if you wish. Then there should be no problem. You arrange it all, personally? Yes. Can you meet me here later, say, 5 o'clock this evening? Very well. Thank you. A lift? Yes. No chance of changing his mind? I don't want to. Why not? Can you think of a better way of torpedoing these talks? Oh, you're still on that, are you? Yes, I am. Ah, oh, it should work. If we pinch a KGB colonel... ...and announce his defection. Which, if they run true to form, they'll call a kidnap. Exactly. And they can't be seen to be sitting at the same table as kidnappers, can they? So, what's the next move? Political clearance, a word with Wellingham. Do you want me to plan the lift? We'll pull Len Shepard onto it. I'll take Falata by myself on the 7 o'clock flight tonight. Assuming you get approval, of course. I'm going to lift him whether I get approval or not. You're tired of working for SIS, are you? If I'm mad, Willie, and everyone seems to think I am, then I've a right to tilt at the odd windmill or two. Jeffrey will be out shortly. Right. And I phoned out, Malta. 
two seats on the seven o'clock flight tonight are the name of Mr. Burnside and Mr. Fulton. My bad pronunciation. Good. Take off then, then. Signal London to meet us with a car. Should take him to the mansion? That's up to London. Okay, I'll see you later. Here's one of them. Neil, what are you doing here? Would you mind us strolling the car park, sir? Well, if it's necessary. But I'd like to get back to the meeting. I think it is. Very well. There's a KGB colonel here by the name of Yuri Filatov. Mm -hmm. He's a double agent for SIS for the last 11 years. But his nerve's going. He's under suspicion that if we don't take him out now, he's going to end up in the Lubyanka graveyard. I don't propose you to lift him now. This evening? That's out of the question. He took a risk to pass a note to Kane, another risk to meet me. We've got to take him out, sir. No, I'm sorry, Neil. He'll have to take his chance until the ink is dry on the salt agreements. And when will that be? I don't know. Another four or five days, I hope. I'm not prepared to wait that long, sir. I'm not giving you a choice. We owe it to the man to get him out. Neil, you couldn't care less about the man. All you care about is killing off salt. That's not true. Isn't it? How often have you pounded my ear with your theories about Russian expansion and treachery? Can you honestly say that these talks are achieving anything? Yes, I can. The Russians made a monster balls up this morning, declared a missile complex near Kaunas we didn't even know existed. So? They stopped just short of admitting that it's ABM. But they agreed a ban on anti-ballistic missiles years ago. Precisely. It proves they can't be trusted. What it proves is that the truth will come out in the end. They realize what they've done, of course. But they were shaken. They're on the run. For how long? Oh, long enough to let us win a lot of points. Give us a good negotiating base. We'd be mad to give them a chance like this to pull out. So the SALT agreement isn't worth the paper it's written on. It can't be enforced or verified. And it leaves the Russians with every opportunity to draw further and further ahead. Neil, you may as well go and bang your head against a brick wall. The government sponsors SALT. It's not going to change its mind because one SIS officer doesn't trust the Russians. And Pilatov? If he can jump after the agreement is signed and before he gets on a Russian plane, good luck to him. Now, I must get back to my meeting. And Neil, no double dealing with this. It's too important. Willie, your brief, Mike? Yes. OK. Get over to the station and tell Lynn to cancel full out of seat on that flight and any arrangements with London. Sir, not approved? No, but tell Lynn to find me somewhere where we can stash full out of for a few days. Right, sir. You're going to lift him without approval? I told you I would. What's the point? Make it clear to Len that he's not to mention to anyone that I've got for that off. I'll handle permissions and reports personally. Sir. Get going, then. Be back here at Harper's Hall with the address. Yes, sir. Come on, what are you going to do? Lift for that off, stash him, and then go back to London and talk to C. What? I'll try to get him to put pressure on Whitehall to let us lift Falatov. Whom you will already have lifted? Yes, but no one will know. Well, the Russians will know. If they start screaming and pull out of the conference, the whole world will know. The Russians won't scream until they're absolutely certain that Falatov's defected, and they can't be certain until we tell them. Why not lift Falatov at the last minute? Because if I refuse to take him today, he may fall to bits, and I don't want that to happen. One way or another, Falatov could be very useful to me. Who's going to look after him while he's stashed? You, Mike, and Len on a watch system. But don't disregard the protection job of ministers. Oh, no, thank you very much. Well, you're not here to enjoy the sunshine. I hope it's snowing in London. I'll let you know when I get there. If Wellingham said no, we must stick by that. We could short-circuit Wellingham and the Foreign Secretary because they're both in Malta, go direct to the Prime Minister. Why are you so anxious to lift Falatov at once? In case anything goes wrong, sir. Falatov will, of course, be of no further use to us. No, but he should be protected, as you well know. Do we know who's heading the KGB team in Malta? Yes, sir. Sarkisian. Nikolai Sarkisian. 
So, what if we lift Filatov, then go to Sarkisian, say that we won't announce the defection, make political capital out of it, if they don't rock the boat out there with accusations? Could I do that without further reference to Wellingham? No, you'll have to check with Wellingham first. Right, sir. No, Burnside. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Dr. Getty. Sir. If I held your convictions and were possessed of your arrogance, I might be tempted to lift Philato first and ask questions afterwards. Don't. If you do anything to prejudice these talks, nothing will save you. Understood, sir. And don't count on the fact that Wellingham was once your father-in-law. He's also a passionate believer in salt. So he'd be very unhappy to be stabbed in the back by you. Theatre Diops. Fine, will you have him escorted up, please? Thanks. Man in. Yes, sir? What's this? What it says. I'd like to be considered for the field school. Sit down, will you? Do you have any languages? Good German, O-level French and Russian. You want to go to a station? I'd like, ultimately, to go into the special section. <laughs> you want to be a sandbagger? Yes. Haven't you seen enough of what sandbaggers have to do? Don't you know his hours of boredom, pushing paper down in the hutch? And then the obligation to risk your life at the whim of some idiot in Whitehall? I know. Not approved. Because of Laura Dickens? I would be willing to take her place. There's a temporary Manning standard in force. I'm only allowed two sandbaggers. But if the Manning standard's lifted or one of them is... Killed? Not approved. Why not? Because I don't want you to be a sandbagger. Is that a final decision? Will you leave if it is? No, I can wait. But don't wait too long. And Marion, put me on the 10.55 to Malta, will you? Car to leave here at 9.15. You're going back? I have no choice. By the way, Jeff Ross is being escorted up from reception. Oh, Mr Ross, sir. Morning, Neil. Morning, Jeff. You were in Malta yesterday. Yes, and I'm going back today. Well, what's happening? I'm going to bust up the talk, Chef. The hit? No, a defection. Yuri Filatov, KGB officer. Oh, well, that's OK, then. Or at least they can't blame you for that. Well, they can. I've been told not to touch him until the talks are over. But? I've got him stashed already. I'm going to tell the Russians this afternoon. Well, that's great. So what happens when it all blows up in your face? I don't give a damn. One man can't change the world, Neil. Meaning? Well, what the hell are you doing all this for? I mean, do you really want to screw up the SALT conference? Or is it just a convenient way of destroying yourself? Stick to your horror comics, Ah, you know damn well what I'm saying is true. You've been looking for lost causes for the last year and a half. This isn't a lost cause. Oh, yeah? What is it, then? A subtle form of suicide? We'll have to wait and see, won't we? Get you something to drink, Mike? No, oh, thanks, but help yourself. This waiting is... Uh, it makes me nervous. I can imagine. I hope it does not have to go on much longer. Yes, well, I've told you, Burnside's on his way back. Things should start to happen soon. When will he get here? Should have landed by now. And you've done a check on Sakis, Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the Russians are living at the Excelsior. Sakis had lunch there. They stayed around when I left. And Filatov? A bit jumpy. 
just wants to get off the island, of course. Tough. Oh, he's a nice bloke. He's an infected. So? So don't shed tears for him. I'm keeping my tears for you, mate. By tonight, the proverbial will have hit the fan and been splattered all over Malta. And that's just the way I want it. Here when you get back, I'll be down at the pool ogling the merchandise. Yeah, well, don't get too excited. You'll be spending the evening with Philato. I just wish they hadn't reduced Malta to the single cell. Why? Well, if we had a number two here as well as Len, it just helped to you know, spread the load a bit. So you could go charging down Straight Street every night? Yeah, so I could get some sleep. Are you growing old, Willie? Please enter. Thank you. You would like to sit down? I'm the operations director of the British Secret Service. Yuri Filatov. We lifted him yesterday afternoon. He's now safely in England. At your, uh, what do you say, mansion in Surrey? No, more secret address. But he will appear on British television towards the end of the week and denounce the KGB. Why do you tell me this? Why not? You're going to find out soon enough. Da, ja, um das hat's wie But it is not the SIS's way to make a volunteer statement. No, but I thought I'd warn you. Filatov's been working for us for a number of years, and we can prove it. So it won't do you any good to issue a statement saying we seduced him away in Malta. You do understand what this will do to the salt discussion? That's not my business. But Filatov's going to say anyway that you've an ABM complex at Kaunas, contrary to existing agreements. That's not true. Well, that's what he's going to say. So the salt agreement's finished anyway. Do your superiors know what you are doing? Of course. We're the slaves of our government, just as you're the slaves of yours. It would be most wise to give Filat back. We don't think so. Have you consulted your American allies? Naturally. They do not want the talks to end. Well, they will after Filat has made his little speech to the free world. I'd like to say that Filat sends his love to you, but he doesn't. You're not sitting in the corner in your ring chair. You sound cheerful. I am. Greatly cheered. Will they pull out of the conference? Not much option, have they? Righteous indignation is the only thing left to them. Well, there's nothing much else left to you either. No? Your Wellingham's going to crucify you. Well, they'll have to get in the queue. Are you and Valium or something? Sorry. You're taking all this remarkably calmly. A lot more calmly than the Russians, aren't they?
Mr. Matthew Peely? Yes. Nikolai Sarkeesian. Oh, do come in. If I may. Oh, please do. We are what I think you say, opposite numbers. Are we? You are the deputy chief of the SIS, and I am myself deputy director of the Комитет Государственной Безопасности. I see. I wanted to say to you, person to person, that I am sorry that you have uh, accepted Filiato. I beg your pardon? It is a time for, for trust and concord between our two nations. Yes. You do not agree? I do agree. Then you must know how we feel about Yuri Filatov. Uh, who is Filatov? Yuri Filatov, our... Uh, you do not know? No. The director of your operations division, he's Mr. Burnside. I don't imagine that that is a secret at the center. Yesterday, he contacted one of my men, Yuri Filato, and offered him some, what is it, inducement to leave the KGB and work with SIS. For reasons which I do not understand, Filato is said to, to have agreed and has gone to England. Are you sure about this? Mr. Burnside has so said himself this afternoon. You will comprehend, Mr. Peely, that if the British government issues a statement to claim that Filato has defected to you, we shall be enforced to retaliate. You'll pull out of salt. I do not know what the Americans will think of you for that, but the peoples of the world, all those who wait for an end to nuclear arms races, they must condemn you. So what do you want? Filato will be returned to us, quietly, and we shall all say no more about it. I shall have to take advice, of course. Excuse me, sir, are you going out? Do you propose to escort me? Yes, sir. If I can leave a note at reception to let Mr. Kane know what I'm doing, I'll... Is it true that Diops has taken Filatov to England? Who, sir? Filatov, the Russian defector. Sorry, I've never heard of him, sir. If you're lying, Wallace, you'll be out of a job by tomorrow morning. Why would I lie, sir? Where is Mr. Burnside? I'm not sure, sir. Where was he when you last saw him? At the Vidala, sir. Can we go there? So when do you think the Russians will make an announcement? I don't care, as long as they don't turn up at the conference table tomorrow. Well, I think I'll quit, too. Don't be daft. I'm not going to quit. They're going to have to sack me. Which they will. Now I'll go. Wouldn't be the same without your ugly mug glowering at me. They'll probably make a D option, you know? No, they wouldn't. They haven't got the class. When I was a grammar school boy, too. No, no. You were an officer in the Marines. I was Sergeant King. Anyway, we've been together for six years. Old married couple. Uh, I think we've been through a lot more together than any married couple. You fancy a Coke or something? Make mine a tonic water, ice and lemon. Good evening, sir. We were just about to get the drinks in. Where is Filato? Filato. You lifted him last night despite a direct order from me. Who says so? The Russians say so. Senior KGB officer called Sarkisyan. What am I supposed to have done? Lifted Filato and taken him to England. That's a lie. Kane? Yes, I agree, sir. It's a, it's a lie. Sarkisyan claims that you told him you'd got Filato. When we lifted the factor, we don't run around and tell the Russians. We know that Filatov's disappeared because we checked the hotel today. That's why I haven't been to see you today. I had a proposal for you, but it got overtaken by events. What proposal? A deal that C worked out. We lift Filatov, but don't announce it. And then the Russians don't make up for us. Wouldn't have worked. The Russians are desperate to pull out of salt now. Why? They got into another mess this morning. They're supposed to be working towards a total of 820 MIRVED ICBMs by 1985. But they got into a twist over that. 
They put the current totals on the table and we know and can prove that they're false. Well, that's it then, sir. The Russians made a balls of the talks and they need an excuse to get out fast. Could explain for Latov's sudden disappearance, especially if he was under suspicion. Yeah. I do not want these talks abandoned. We're running this show now. We may never have a chance to run it again. I understand that. Well? You're saying this is your moment of glory. Sir Geoffrey Wellingham on the front page of the Observer Colour Supplement. And it could all be wrecked by some miserable Russian who's gone missing or has been knocked over by the KGB. I could have you sacked for that. And why don't you? OK. All quiet on this particular front. Then we've got problems. You could be contacted by Welling and asked directly whether or not we're holding for Latov. And in the end, it's going to come out that we are holding? Yes, eventually I'll have to declare him, get full processing on him. Well, Mike and I are standing by the boss. We're too deep already to do anything else, but you've got a choice. I don't know. I don't want to let you down, but... You're newly promoted and you've got a wife and kids. Yes. OK, Len. Let's hope he doesn't think to ask you. I'm sorry. Don't worry about it. Just get yourself off home. Thanks. Why cannot I go now? Because we can't fix the reception arrangements in England. Everything will be all right. Yes, it'll all be fine. Darling, I'm home. Hello, Len. Sir, I asked your wife if we could speak alone. She's upstairs, I think, telling bedtime stories. Now, come and sit down and tell me one. Sir? Do sit down. Now, before you say anything, I want to make a short statement. Whatever's been going on here, I accept that you've been acting under the direct orders of the operations director, so you're in the clear. Moreover, while I have a responsibility to Sir Geoffrey Wellingham and the FCO, my chief loyalty must be to our service, as is yours. Yes, sir. I have a feeling that if the whole truth ever came out, we should lose Diops and both sandbaggers. So the whole truth must remain between you and me. And I'll protect them. Does Neil Burnside have a man called Filatov? Yes, sir. He took him to England yesterday? No, sir. He's in a villa in Rabat. Just up the road? Yes, sir. Write down the address for me, will you? Of course. Inexplicably, the Russians are going to get this address. Not from you or me. Nor will Diops or the Sandbaggers ever have been involved. The Diops and Sandbagger one are at the Villa Nasa. Even Russians can turn an Elsonic island. Then? Oh, Mike. Uh, Mike's escorting the Minister of State to dinner. Остановись, Юрий, а то будем стрелять. We make an apology for disturbing you, Mr. Burnside. Берите его. You have seen the films, Mr. Burnside. I shall be leaving a man for 20 minutes to look at the door. Len? Yes. Ah, oh, well, the game's up then. I'd say so. I forgot to shoot us.
Sit down, both of you. I said sit down. I have quite a bit to say and I want an attentive audience. The Russians raided a villa last night, Court Filata. So I believe. Perhaps you should also believe that Peel isn't quite the fool we've always taken him for. As I understand it, Filatov was hiding out alone. Yes, that's what I choose to understand too. But I want you out of here, Neil. Back to London. I'm going this morning. I'm relieved. The Russians are staying in the conference, I suppose. Unfortunately for them, they have no choice. They can't use the Pilatov business without admitting that one of their officers wanted to defect. Or perhaps they're doing better than you think. Want to keep the talks going. Oh, no, no, no. They know they've blown it. I should think their chief negotiator's headed for Siberia. And you had better be headed for London. Sir. You're lucky, Neil. Luckier than you deserve. There's a lesson for you here. You'll be a fool not to learn it. Talks are continuing, sir. Yes. Well, at least, if Wellingham is right, the Russians aren't happy about that. Well, it won't stop them conning us in the end, will it? I'm surprised they don't find another excuse to get out of this round. It's not easy to manufacture an excuse. It'll have to be a big one. A very big one. And I'm not going to give it to them. You've tried. And failed dismally. The Russians ran rings round me. Yes, but they have a lot of advantages, so when it comes to breaking the rules, they make us look like amateurs. We gave them a lot of bother, though. Well, let's hope they've forgotten about that, in case they decide to pay us back sometime. Yeah. A very big excuse. Right. I think. How could they get out of the conference and at the same time pay us back for taking Filatov? Hit one of their own people. Yes. And it was their chief negotiator that screwed the talks. Would they really do it? KGB, would you? My God, if they did, Wellingham would think it was one of us. Acting on my instructions to destroy salt. Here we go. What do we do? Leave that lot. Get to the Vidala ahead of the Russians. We shepherd the Russians. We see anything we can do. Come on, get a move on. Ready to go to the airport? Yes, thank you, Lynn. I'm sorry. It's OK. Well, it's like you said. I have a wife and kids. Well, let's hope they don't have to grow up in the shadow of a very strong Russia. I don't like salt either. But sufficient under the day, eh? That's the way it has to be for me. Do you know you ought to go into politics? Do very well. What's that? All right, you take ground level, I take high points. Roger. Filatov's in the lead car. Filatov. <laughs> 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 
have your attention, please, with Mr. Neil Burnside. Mr. Neil Burnside, passenger traveling to London. You will please contact the remote office. Mr. Neil Burnside, to contact the remote office, please.